food producing agriculture accounts for 30% of total energy demand and generates up to 30% of human made greenhouse gas emissions. Can we make it greener? We take a look in this episode of Sustainable Energy. Hello, I'm Asha Sampert. I've come to Italy's capital, Rome, to find out about the role of sustainable energy in getting food from the field to your fork and to see how nature-based solutions can make agriculture greener. Now, global food production is expected to increase 70% by 2050, so the sector is facing unprecedented resource pressures. Not very far from here are the headquarters of UN's Food and Agriculture Organization that actually made that prediction and it's where our guest for this episode works. Olivier Dubois is the coordinator of the energy program at the FAO. We'll get his views on how we can transition from agriculture that relies on fossil fuel to more sustainable farming that works in harmony with nature. Also coming up on the show, we take you through some facts and figures to show why more sustainable food security models should be considered today. We see how investing in cutting-edge agriculture made the Netherlands the second biggest exporter of agricultural goods in the world. You know, greenhouses are just as Dutch as wooden shoes, as tulips. And we take you to Uganda, where a leader in sustainable energy shows us how you can turn farm waste into energy at home. The crops are used for food and the waste that the farmers generate, we use it to make energy. Producing food takes a lot of energy. It's needed in all steps of the agri-food chain, from producing crops and rearing animals to harvesting, processing, storing and transporting food. So changing food systems is easier said than done. Here's why it's important to try. It's estimated there could be as many as 9.1 billion people living on this planet in 2050. That's roughly 30% more than today. So is there a way to feed everyone while preserving the planet? Since World War II, modern agriculture has developed into a monoculture. This is where very large portions of land are used to grow a single crop. Farming also relies on the massive use of fertilizers and chemicals such as pesticides. It's estimated 3.5 million tons could be sprayed on fields worldwide in 2020. Monoculture and pesticides have worked well together to increase the yield to achieve food security for the planet. But this has come at a high price for the environment. Food production may have increased, but the FAO warns that soils, forests, water, air quality and biodiversity continue to deteriorate. And it's not even stopped world hunger. Industrial farming could also be threatening insects. That's the warning from Friends of the Earth in their 2020 Insect Atlas report. Experts say at least 10% of insect species are threatened with extinction. That could put food production at risk. Our tiny friends have a huge role to play in food systems. It's estimated that 75% of the world's food crops depend on pollination by insects. And insects are also great at processing natural waste. They decompose manure, dead plants and animals to help improve soil quality. Could agroecology be the answer? Agroecology is based on a farmer's local knowledge of their land, combined with the latest scientific developments on soils and biodiversity. Agroecology turns its back on synthetic fertilizers and tries to reduce the use of machinery. And here are some more tips for greener agriculture. The International Fund for Agricultural Development encourages the use of agroforestry and avoiding monoculture. By growing different types of plants, it makes the soil richer with nutrients and attracts a wider variety of insects. Importantly, it helps to ensure one type of insect doesn't become dominant and damage too many crops. There are other problems facing food production. About a third of the food produced globally is lost or wasted. With it, about 38% of energy consumed in food systems. So the FAO recommends turning to energy-smart agri-food systems. But it also says that to achieve this, world governments must invest in the transition to sustainable agriculture. And measures need to be supported by farmers themselves. This might mean saying goodbye to intensive, large-scale monoculture. But it could lead to a greener planet.
Olivier Dubois, welcome to Sustainable Energy. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about this place, which is amazing, by the way. The city centre is right behind us. Yes, this is a, a, indeed an amazing place. It's called Cafarella Park. You have two farms, you have sheep, you have cheese production. So it's a very good example of the integration of spaces, wild park plus agriculture. Olivier, you work for the FAO, which is driving the issue of green energy in agri-food value chains, but you also have your personal views on the matter. Does greening food chains mean changing food systems? And what does it mean for us, consumers? Yes, indeed, it means, it means changing things both from the production side, but also from the consumer side. We need to introduce renewable energy in, in food chains, but we also need to consider the integration of water and energy use in food production. So basically being more resource efficient because of the stress of the natural resources, but also the need to become low carbon. The meaning for consumers is that they will need to ask for these solutions because you need to create a market for that mm -hmm. so that the producers are motivated. What's the relationship between energy, agriculture and food security? Well, you need energy at every stage of the food chain. So it's essential for food security. So you need to be very efficient in the resource use, but also you need to decarbonize uh, your food chains. For energy, for FAO, what we propose is what we call the Energy Smart Food Program, which basically aims at supplying energy at every stage of the food chains. And in many countries, you don't have that. But also to do this in a more efficient way, using renewable energy and integrating the use of water and energy in food production. How are governments responding to what you're saying? You have a lot of governments who realize that lack of energy is a major cause of food losses because you don't have energy for cold chains, for storing food, and so there's a big interest in that. But also, for example, for Africa, more than 80% of their national determined uh, contributions, which NDCs, which is their commitments to fulfill the Paris Agreement, they include bioenergy. So it, it really shows a trend towards addressing these, these issues. Which countries are showing a will to make a change? You have a lot of countries, for example, where you have emergency situations, crisis, refugees. And there, the refugees, they, they, they grab whatever source of energy they, they, they can. It's usually wood to cook, to heat themselves. And so the governments are realizing that. And so they want solutions, greening the energy use in, in refugee camps, but also for host communities. Because if you don't do it for host communities, it creates conflicts. So there's a lot of interest in those kind of things in many countries where you have refugees in the Middle East, uh, the Horn of Africa, East Africa. But beyond the refugee uh, situation, you have very interesting programs, for example, on, on biogas in, in, in China, in, in, in Vietnam. You have interesting uh, program on rural energy in, in Morocco. And on a different level, in a way, in Abu Dhabi, in UAE Emirates. Thank you, Olivier. We'll hear more from you later. We've got to take a quick break. When we return, we head to the Netherlands, a country with plenty of knowledge to contribute to cutting-edge agriculture. The idea is to install these facilities in the south of Europe, North Africa and Middle East. 